here at Boss Fight Studio. Today we have going on pre-sale our Legends, Legends of Lucha Libre Lucha Extreme set, uh, accessory set. And then one of the items it comes with is this all new folding chair, folding steel chair. It is in scale, as you can see, with other wrestling figures, um, as well as our own wrestling figures. And the cool thing about it is... It actually folds up, so Okay, people, welcome back to another Fwoosh Weekly. I'm apparently your conductor, Robo, and I am excited. Why? There is so much going on right now. Holy moly. I was laying out all my bullet points a minute ago, and it's just... It keeps coming because there's, is there at least three shows going on right now? There's MCM London, there is Paris Comic Con, and a Tamashi Nations all going on as we speak. I mean, in fact, I'm I'm going to look at it right now. Bye. Because stuff keeps popping up. It's just like, oh, come on. <laughs> But first up, we're going to talk about Boss Fight Studio. Because besides comics, besides Star Wars, besides sci-fi, besides all the other stuff I collect, I love wrestling. So when Boss Fight announced that they were going to do a Legends of Lucha Libre line, I thought, oh! And especially after they announced it was going to be 6, 6.5 inch scale, ah! Now they're up for pre-order, and it was well worth the wait. Wave 1 consists of Ray Phoenix and Penta Zero M, better known as Pentagon Jr. to me at least. I don't know all the logistics, but after watching WWE so long, I, my brain explodes when I think about somebody wrestling for one federation under one name, but they can still go elsewhere under a different name. WWE needs to unclench just a little bit. But this is the first time we're seeing Penta painted, and oh, man. And that's not taking away anything from Ray Phoenix either. They both look like excellent action figures, which I would expect no less from Boss Fight. Penta's torn mask is even more surprising. It's just like a surprise last minute. Hey, here's wave one up for pre-order. Here's something you haven't seen. Oh, or maybe we've seen it and I didn't see it. I don't know. Either way, yes, please. To go along with wave one or part of wave one, I don't know how this works, are two accessory packs. Lucha de la Muerte has some barbed wire, a bat with barbed wire, a sickle, a kendo stick, a light tube, a breakaway table, and a customizable masked head. While Lucha Extrema, probably saying that wrong, I apologize, also has a customizable masked head, a two by four, <laughs> A microphone, nightstick, two dog collars with a real chain, a breaking concrete block, and a steel chair that folds realistically. That was actually them demonstrating that in the opening of this weekly. It's a, it's a pretty much a Ant-Man shrunk down chair. Perfect time for these two since the Lucha Bros are working their way up the ladder to the tag team championship in AEW. It's almost like that was planned. But wrestling's real, right? I mean, nothing's planned, so how could they fit that? How'd they know? But all this is up for pre-order right now on the Boss Fight shop, and it will ship sometime next summer. Whew. <laughs> McFarlane Toys continues to just be so fast and furious with their Fortnite line. It's hard to keep up. A few new reveals last week, which will be out in the next few months. Yesterday, I walked into Target and found a Peely. <laughs> Not all the Peelys I want, but a Peely. And then Nathan Sims out in Utah sent this picture along from his local Walmart, where he found the shopping cart with Warpaint Jonesy and Firework Team Leader. So much goodness, oh my god. <laughs> Love it or hate it, you gotta admit, Fortnite, action figure-wise, is kicking on all cylinders right now. Kicking on all cylinders. I'm sure that's the saying, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell I'm closely following the progress of the Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi War Machine? Can you blame me? Look at this bad son of a bitch. He's just awesome! Last week we saw a scale comparison with the Amazing Yamaguchi Bleeding Edge Iron Man. It's appropriately bigger. This week we get painted shots. I think this is still a prototype because the release is a little ways out there. But, man, Kyoto just... They set a schedule, they stick to it because... I just got the payment request for my Optimus Prime a couple days ago. It shipped today, and because of that, I won't even have to pull all the Optimus Primes I have in the review booth already from looking at the 3-0 Optimus Prime a couple days ago. 
<laughs> it's insane. Come on. Last week I talked about the Astrobots Apollo Prototype Edition that was exclusive to the Taipei Toy Festival. It's a cool looking thing, and the more I look at it, the more I like it. Now, I talked about Astrobots last year. I never got one for whatever reason, because yeah, <laughs> there have been a few toy releases. Adult collectible releases. But this one's becoming more and more tempting. The green is striking, and that just works nicely off the blacks and the grays and the purples of the rest of the body. But it looks like an American audience will have access to this prototype, at least if you're in San Antonio, Texas. Astrobots, or Toy Notch, will be displaying at the Alamo City Comic Con next weekend, and they're bringing the prototype edition of Apollo as an exclusive there, too. Makes me wish I was gonna be in San Antonio next weekend. Actually, I think there's two shows in San Antonio next weekend, but if you're down for getting some Astrobot action, go to the Alamo City one. NECA has teased a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles android body for Krang. I don't know any details, I just know here's the picture, and it's looking pretty awesome. Just a little tease. But speaking of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Super 7's Ultimate line, which is up for pre-order right now, Pre-orders for that will end next week. So if you're interested at all, especially after they showed that they will have a second set of weapons fully painted and loose from the sprues, uh, you better jump on that because you only have a week. Wave 1 consists of Raphael, of Baxter Stockman, a Splinter, and a Foot Soldier, all done in the style of the vintage Playmates toys. To up interest a little bit more, they showed a mock-up of the packaging that could possibly be around these figures. It's simple but colorful. It's kind of vintage feeling. I... I I dig it, but as always, it's the trash between me and plastic. So it's like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> Going up for pre-order just a minute ago. I mean, it was like, click, 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 save these pictures. I come in here, shoot some video. Amazon seemed to jump the gun a little bit ahead of the panel at Paris Comic Con, but here are pictures of Wave 3 of Hasbro's Power Rangers Lightning Collection. I know nothing about Power Rangers, so I apologize for this. Just look at the pretty pictures. I mean, mmm. Look at Lord Dracon, Lord Dracon, Lord, this guy, <laughs> Dino Charge Gold Ranger, looking very dino and chargey. Beast Morphers Blue Ranger, the only thing I got here is blue is one of my favorite colors. Yes, one of. Tomorrow you ask me, it's probably green. Next day it may be yellow and then red and then black and then we'll come back around to blue. But have you looked at the Blue Ranger enough? Cool. And then Mighty Morphin Red Ranger, which if I have any kind of connection to any kind of Rangers, it would be Mighty Morphin. All I remember mid-90s was I, I worked the day shift, I got off, I started drinking, and this may be on the TV before I started playing video games for the rest of the day. That's my exposure to Power Rangers. <sighs> I did get Wave 1. They're excellent figures, but man, there's so much stuff out there. I can't just be buying something that I have no attachment to because I'm already buying too much Fortnite shit. According to Amazon, these are due to release in December. This picture has popped up on all my socials this week. It appears to be an big extravagant end cap at Walmart for their exclusive Transformers 35th anniversary Optimus Prime and Megatron and then Siege, Blue Streak, and Sound Blaster. Not all stores are going to get this more than likely, but if yours does, it's going to be hard to miss. Well, I can't say that. I walked into Walgreens the other day with a buddy and I was standing in the toy aisle going, man, there's nothing around here. Oh, well. And then I'm directly looking at him standing in the main aisle and he looks at me from an end cap and goes, hey, when did Emma start wearing a black costume? Boom! Ha <laughs> ha! Bot. Done. But that's how observant I am. So even if they have a big red with flashing lights on it, big Transformers logos all over it, I'll still walk right past it and just be like, oh, well, nothing new here, and walk straight out the door. So, Philip, you're my good luck charm. We gotta go toy shopping. Our good buddy Troy up in Canada has found the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Rise of Skywalker Wave 2 at his local store. Wasn't scheduled to come out until December, but there you go. I mean, what you gonna do? They put it on the shelf. He bought the Cara Dune, but also available in this wave is Janna from Rise of Skywalker. Uh, there's Wedge from A New Hope, and then Ceremony Luke from The End of A New Hope. Because you know, Force Friday was a couple weeks ago. It's been too long. It's time for some new Star Wars figures. Which, <laughs> I say that jokingly, but I'm never going to complain. I, I will take new Star Wars figures all day, every day. Because, like I mentioned, both London and Paris Comic Cons are going on this weekend. 
there's going to be Marvel reveals, there's going to be Star Wars reveals, Power Rangers, Transformers. But first, let's talk about their exclusive Marvel Legends Retro Deadpool and Grey Hulk. They call them exclusive to the overseas shows, but do not fret, they will be fan channel exclusives too. Be available at Dorkside Toys, at GameStop, at Amazon, at Big Bad Toy Store, at Best Buy, your local mom and pop shop, O'Reilly Auto Parts, McDonald's. No, 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 just fan channels. Also available through the fan channel soon will be the, uh, well, European exclusive Star Wars Black Series Marvel Comics Luke Skywalker. Same as the Ceremony Luke that's being found in Canada right now, except it has different accessories and a, a fancier packaging, which means must have it, even though I'm just going to open it and then it, uh, be two Ceremony Lukes with different things to hold. But as I'm recording this, in Paris, the Star Wars slash Transformers slash Power Rangers panel is going on, and it seems they revealed a Star Wars Black Series Episode 2 Anakin and Obi-Wan. Now, unless my eyes deceive me, and they often do, these look fantastic. These may be contenders for shelf supremacy. But that also may be the newness of them. You know, oh, these are new? They must be better. Ha ha! Now, as I'm recording this, I haven't seen any pretty promotional shots. I haven't gotten a Hasbro email yet. So hopefully, by the time I'm done editing this, these will be here. And if not, here's at least a look, a glimpse at them. But man, pretty soon, like Darth Vader, it'll be like, well, here's my Obi-Wan collection. And over here, is my Anakin collection. Open that door and here's my Optimus Prime room. And then of course the Deadpool wing of my house. <laughs> Soon, if not already. We've seen her at shows, but this week was the official solicitation for the Metacom Mafex Aquaman Mira. Saying it like that is weird, Aquaman Mira. It's Mira from the Aquaman movie. I've been passing on a lot of the DC stuff, but wow. I mean, really, wow. If the Final Factory product can match the prototype paints on the face, it's going to be one hell of an action figure. And that's along with, which we usually see in the factory pieces, the, the great shaping, the proportions here. It just, it's Mira in plastic form. I thought I was good with the Mattel Multiverse version, but again, wow. She comes with two heads, one casual one regal. The water effects for her arms look very nifty, but the ones that kind of throw me off are the wine blasts. The... Don't get me wrong, I get what they are, and they work beautifully here, but how are they going to work in the real world? Will there be a stand with different arms to hold up all the pieces, or some kind of disc with holes in it where you can plug them in and then set it behind her? I don't know, we'll probably see that closer to release because we have quite a while, like most Mayfix before it actually releases. $70 scheduled for July of next year. But that's not all that Metacom is shooting for next July. Magazine scans have popped up of, <laughs> we expected this, the Metacom Mayfex Spider-Man Far From Home upgrade suit. You knew as soon as you got the figure arts that Metacom was gonna come along and be like, hey, this one looks a little bit better, right? Okay, here you go, plastic crack. It's happened several times. My problem here is I really, 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 really like the Figuarts Spider-Man Far From Home upgrade suit body, but once you get comparisons going on, I have to admit that the Mafex, at least in prototype form, is pretty damn close to the actual real-life Spider-Man costume. The Figuarts looks like kind of a comic version, a more muscular, a more defined. Looking at the Mafex, the head size may be a little bit off, but otherwise, it looks damn close to the movie. But that's one of the perks of waiting till well after the movie's released. I mean, and it's on home video, you go to your Blockbuster and rent it, and then you go buy the Mafex toy. I don't know, I'm sure we'll see pretty promotional pics soon enough, and I'll have to make that big decision of, do I get the Mafex, or do I just keep with the figure arts? <laughs> you guys know me too well, I'm gonna be pre-ordering this thing. And if you go outside through the gates and across the yard, there's my house dedicated to Spider-Man action figures only. <laughs> you want to see another redo Spider-Man? Because Tamashi Nations is going on, and Bandai is kind of showing off some new stuff or continuing the vicious cycle however you want to look at it on display are some sh figure arts avengers in-game figures four but three are redos one is one new character we actually saw the upgraded worthy captain america at new york comic-con i don't know why they're hiding this back behind maybe different audience who knows but it's cool it's nitty it's gritty it's got the broken shield it has me on there it has a big electrical effect all <laughs> for the iron man mark 85 it looks like they've made compatible accessories this time around i think they sold accessory packs separate but it didn't fit the 85 i think i don't know i don't get a lot into the bandai iron mans so i don't know if this is a new figure or it's just the accessories and then they're showing off a new iron spider 
Wasn't I just talking about this? <laughs> Bandai has already released an SH Figure Arts Iron Spider, but the Waldos were big and thick. Yes, they're called Waldos. No, I didn't make that up. That's what they're actually called. I passed on that because of them looking kind of weird, but then I grabbed the Mafex Iron Spider, which is amazing. The body is anyway, you know the deal. The Waldo joints in the back, again, I didn't make that up. Highly susceptible to breaking. I fixed the joints on those, but then here comes Bandai with an Iron Spider 2.0 with the kill eyes. I'm not sure if that's a new body, but those are definitely upgraded Waldos. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with the Mafex, even though I had to fix the back. The one new reveal is Rescue, though. She looks pretty awesome. She looks a little bit thinner than the Marvel Legends version we got. She also has a swappable back piece to do the... But you may be noticing the picture quality here is <laughs> kind of like you know, uh, hunting for Sasquatch. That's because there's no photography allowed in this section of the booth. So of course we're getting pictures. And then there's little placards saying full reveal at Tokyo Comic Con, which is at the, uh, it's late November, somewhere in there. Which if it's anything like last year, they will show a bunch of stuff that's like to be determined. Don't know when it's coming out. Here, you wanna lick, psych. And we're just left wondering when we'll get it. But even that's kinda cool. There's some anticipation, there's some mystery. So, I don't know, I just like seeing new stuff. But I don't know if I'm buying new stuff. Mm. Yeah. And that's it for this week. Kinda, kinda. <laughs> the Marvel panel in Paris is tomorrow. Also tomorrow is the Star Wars panel in London. And then their Marvel panel is Sunday, something like that. There's more reveals going on this weekend. So maybe on Sunday we'll sit at the desk, talk about some of those reveals because, <laughs> yeah, new stuff. And then next week in Luca and Barcelona, Hasbro will be in attendance for more Star Wars, Marvel, Transformers, Power Rangers. It just never ends. But you know what? That's okay. At least when they show new characters, new toys, not... Optimus Primes and Anakin's and Obi-Wan's and Spider-Man's just ready. I'm ready for some villains. I'm ready for more X-Men. I'm ready for more stuff that we haven't seen in plastic form before. I have faith. Come on. That's why I'm so excited about Boss Fight's Lucha Line. It's new. It's different. It's stuff I don't have on the shelf already. I'm still excited about other stuff, but new stuff is becoming more priority. As always, all these pictures will be on the Foosh front page tomorrow. That way you can get a better look at them. I may have skipped a couple of pictures here and there. You don't have me standing right here. Just... <laughs> There'll also be links to pre-orders and other information. Everything you need from this. So if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the Foosh.